Okay, holy smokes, everyone. Welcome to a market open live stream. Just uh, drop a comment in the chat if you can hear me, uh, just to make sure everything's okay before we uh, go ahead and proceed into uh, some of the things we're going to discuss uh, in today's uh, market open. I'll go ahead and uh, bring up the chat here. And yeah, you guys just let me know if you can hear me um, and everything's working well there. Good to go. Sweet. Okay, fantastic. So yeah, we're going to talk about um, what's going on in the markets today, some some things that are moving in the markets, uh, some news, um, and we're also going to go over some breaking news because we do have some breaking news here uh, as well. Um, something actually just popped up on my screen right now as we are speaking. Very interesting. I think you guys are going to like this. So look at this, everyone. This is uh, breaking news. Uh, US to sanction over 300 uh, Russian elites and block uh, Russian central bank gold. So um, this is literally uh, breaking, news right, breaking news right now, if you can see here. <laughs> Wasn't planning on talking about this, but um, hey, this is why it's good to uh, be live so you can get the news as it breaks. So this is very uh, interesting to see how exactly uh, the US plans to sanction and um, to ban this, uh, this gold here. So let's have a look. So the United States plans to sanction approximately 400 Russian individuals and entities, including uh, more than 300 lawmakers from Russian lower house of parliament, uh, the Duma and Russian elites, a senior Biden administration office, uh, official said Thursday. So let's have a look here what else they're saying. Yep, they're going on about the situation in Ukraine. Uh, so that in, in the, they're in talks right now, Biden's in talks uh, with the European Union and the measures they're going to do to further crack down on uh, Russia to try to um, cripple their economy. So hopefully um, the Russian oligarchs, they're, I guess they're hoping on the strategy is that they'll turn on them, uh, turn on Putin, sorry. Um, let's see what else, if there's any other more details here. The EU and G7 will also inform international organizations from this point forward they are no longer uh, to operate within Russia under business as usual standards, said the official who requested uh, an enemy in order to uh, preview announcements that had not yet been made public. Okay. Let's see what else they're doing here. So Biden will also announce a new set of American efforts to aid uh, the Ukrainian people, said the senior White House uh, aide. So they're going to be providing billions and billions of dollars to uh, of humanitarian aid. Okay, so yeah, that's a big news here. I thought we just got breaking news, so I'm sure we'll get more information soon um, about uh, how they're going to block Russia's uh, central bank's gold because we all know uh, Russia has been uh, hoarding gold recently. I think um, gold uh, is actually one of their biggest reserves, even more than uh, global currency reserves. Um, so they've definitely been trying to prepare for this situation. So let's also go over here. Um, what stocks are making the biggest moves pre-market? So let's have a look here. See DRI. Um, so GME, the meme stocks, that's down a bit today. Down 5% after a big rally essay of about 13, 14%. And um, yeah, I'll get to you guys' questions uh, later after we go uh, over this news here. So Nicola, that's another big one that's uh, moving at the moment uh, in the pre-market up 18% because they announced they're going to be doing some electric uh, truck. But you know me, I wouldn't be investing uh, with Nicola with all the issues that they had last year. Um... So KB Homes, they missed their estimates of quarterly earnings. I don't really invest in them. Spotify shares jumped 3.7% in the pre-market after reaching agreement with Alphabet Google. They let subscribers sign up for the service directly through Google's uh, Play Store. Um, okay. Yep, they're going over Nikola there again. So the reason why Nikola has soared 15% in the pre-market after announcing, like I said, an electric truck uh, production began at its Coolidge, uh, Arizona factory last week, meeting a goal that had been um, articulated during its most recent quarterly earnings report last month. So GameStop. So uh, so of something something I'm starting to see here, a trend I've seen over the past week 
a lot of the speculative retail stocks have um, started to bounce back because they were the first to sell off. And how the markets normally work is the most speculative assets will sell off first, but then they'll most likely be the first to recover. Not that I'm saying, you know, you should go and be investing in meme stocks. So GameStop uh, remains on watch after video game retailer stocks surged 14% Wednesday, making a seventh uh, straight day of gains after Chairman uh, Ryan Cohen brought 100,000 more shares and raised his stake to 11.9%. So I guess that's why the um, why their stock is surging because their CEO um, is buying more shares. So other companies don't really know too much about. Okay, so let's have a look how the futures are looking here. So Europe, pretty mixed. DAX, the German market, that's just down about 0.27%. Uh, the FTSE, that's pretty much flat. And the stocks, 600, that's pretty much the top 600 companies in Europe. That's uh, just flat down 0.06%. And so futures, so futures are up a bit here. The Dow up about 124 points. The S&P up about half a percent and NASDAQ up about 0.58%. And uh, oil, so oil is starting to uh, make a bit of a comeback here. We did see oil, I'll bring up the chart here, did drop uh, below $100 per barrel. But we can see here, you can see here at the chart, it is uh, making a violent rally back. So something that would be concerned for the markets of risk uh, to watch out for. Uh, that could, you know, really ruin this uh, recovery we're seeing in the markets right now is if oil does go back up to around $150 or hits $150 uh, new all-time high. Let's see what else is happening. Natural natural gas is down a bit today. Gold. So gold's having a, a decent day, up half a percent, and silver's having a much better day, up 1.6%. So bring up the chart here. Um, okay, so, yep, so it's $1,948, up 0.57%, and uh, we'll see if uh, gold can get back to uh, around that 2000 level. So silver, yep, up 1.63%. Uh, Look at bonds. We can see here on the 10-year, the 10-year US Treasury has been absolutely skyrocketing. That's what I just did a video on uh, just about two hours ago. I uh, uploaded it about how there's been um, a big sell-off uh, in bonds. We can see here over the past uh, year, um, the yields on bonds, the 10-year US Treasury has been uh, rising rapidly. So it was about 1.17% 1 uh, in March uh, last year, 2021. And now we're hitting around the 2.4% uh, level. So this is making uh, mortgage rates, the 30-year fixed rate mortgages uh, in the US, they're about 4.4% now. So I think this will hopefully take some heat out of the crazy housing market, which is up, you know, 19% year over year. So these price gains are completely unsustainable. And I think these rising mortgage rates are definitely going to cool it. Okay, so we're four minutes until the uh, morning bell. We'll go ahead. Um, yeah, that's something else I wanted to look about at two crypto. So normally what happens with crypto is after Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, have a bit of a rally, um, what we normally tend to see once Bitcoin becomes a bit more stable, uh, you can tend to see some altcoin runs. Now, me, I'm not personally investing in any altcoins uh, at the moment. Um, normally, I only invest with them when we're in a you know a, a very strong bull market in crypto, and I don't hold them long term. But we can see here today uh, some altcoins that are moving pretty strongly is Cardano. Cardano has um, a very strong uh, community behind it. Uh, in crypto, if you're a crypto investor, I'm sure you know about Cardano. Um, they have a really strong community, kind of like Dogecoin. And Dogecoin is up about 10% today as well, these doggy coins. Yeah, I'm not investing in any meme doggy coins, um, but that's the kind of sentiment that's going on in the crypto space. Uh, we're seeing some big gains uh, here on these uh, altcoins. Okay. So let's have a look at the chat, see what you guys are. Uh, what you guys are talking about. Um, yeah, Aldo's talking about Ripple. Okay. Sandy, we're being pushed into war by those who will never serve. Yep, that's true. Yep. 
Yeah, Matthew earning 150k a year. Yeah, that's that's a sad reality uh, we're in right now. You could be earning 150k uh, per year, uh, but if your single income, these house prices are getting so crazy, even that's not enough for some areas. <laughs> no, you can't buy a Toyota Land Cruiser Utes in XRP. Fly so good. <laughs> comparing Cardeno to Doge. No, I wasn't comparing Cardeno to Dogecoin. There's obviously a lot more utility coming uh, with Cardeno, and I do, I do, I do like the project, and I do like their. Uh, uh, their founder, Charles Hoskins. But I just don't like investing in altcoins uh, when we're not clearly in a bull market yet for crypto. Lee, he's moved everything to precious metals and crypto. USA markets, time's up in his opinion. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, let's go ahead and get ready for the uh, the bell. Then I'll get into some more news here. Let's see what Bloomberg is talking about. That Boeing is going to compensate Spicejet in form of cash and aircraft. There's a big celebration happening at the Gwalior Airport. As you can see, they've literally uh, nothing rolled interesting down here. the red carpet. Okay. See some other news here. Look at this. This is something that's um, a pretty uh, interesting topic right now, a pretty uh, hot topic. Um, fertilizer prices absolutely going skyrocketing, uh, especially as a uh, Ukraine war cut supply, leaving, leaving farmers shocked. So I'm sure you guys have seen that these fertilizer costs uh, are rising. And unfortunately, what this is going to lead to is more commodity price increases and specifically uh, more food price increases. And I don't know about you, but when it, it seems like now, every time I go to the grocery store, prices are higher and higher uh, every trip. And this is very worrying when you have gas, food, and housing all going up at the same time. Really the three uh, staples that consumers need to survive. Uh, maybe they may be able to handle with one of them are going up at, a, at one time, but with all three of them going up at one time, uh, this is definitely not good. And um, unfortunately, the Federal Reserve, they're behind the curve. Um, and they're not really doing anything to fight this inflation. So let's see if uh, they're about to start the bell. Go ahead and bring Bloomberg up here. Okay. 25 seconds out from the opening bound this Thursday morning. Good morning to you. Equities with a little bit of a bounce on the S&P, up a half of 1% on the NASDAQ, up a half of 1% also. This equity market doing okay in the face of a Treasury market sell-off that resumes. Yields higher, much, much higher. That's the opening bound in New York. Switch up the board and get to the bond market. Treasuries ended last month in the low 180s. Now with a move higher to 236.63 and up another seven or eight basis points this morning. Euro dollar 109.81 down two tenths of one percent. Crude down about six tenths of one percent. And as for this relationship with China, this headline just crossing the Bloomberg. The United States saying speculation of a deal on China's stock listings is premature. That headline just crossing. Happening right now over in Europe in Brussels, Jens Stoltenberg continues a news conference speaking to reporters. He says the following. The NATO Secretary General says the use of chemical weapons will have wide consequences. We need to be working out what those consequences actually are. Mm. We've just wrapped up a NATO summit. This is the direction of travel from here. Leaders leaving that, they will go on to the G7 Very meeting. To see we what have a G7 meeting. Then from there, we have an EU Council meeting as well. It'll be very interesting to see what happens with these uh, chemical weapons. This is something I'm pretty worried about. And let's see what happens with this situation. Wow, so the president busy today. Busy tomorrow as well, meeting with his Polish counterpart. So that's the story of the moment about, what are we, a minute into the session? We're up four-tenths of 1% on the S&P. Breaking down the stock action, here's Taylor Riggs. John, take a look at shares of Uber from foe to friend. All right, I think that's enough of uh, Bloomberg. Let's go back to the fertilizer. But I will say that that is um, another risk for the markets right now what is really going to be the end game of this conflict with uh, Russia and Ukraine. If the US doesn't get involved um, and if NATO doesn't get involved, 
well, I think most of this conflict is priced into the markets. But another big risk is, and we're seeing uh, NATO start to send more troops uh, to the border in Ukraine on the uh, western border, is if for whatever reason NATO gets involved and the US gets involved and this turns into a global conflict, well, then we'd see a lot more pain in the markets and we would see a big decline. So that's why I still got um, a fair bit of cash on the sidelines, ready to buy the dip in case of any of these black swan events uh, that could come up. But still, we just don't know what will happen because it's very hard to tell what is the truth uh, from both sides. So we'll have to see what happens then. Um, there's other things, that, yeah, I can't really get into uh, about that. So like we're talking about everyone before the bell, fertilizer price surge going to lead to more inflation, more food prices going up. But unfortunately, like I was saying, uh, the Federal Reserve is behind the curve. And I was really hoping that the Federal Reserve would um, do their job and uh, see the real crisis we're in right now. But it's become clear, and this is the reason why I've started to dollar cost average back into the market. Again, I'm not going all in. I've still got cash on the sidelines prepared for if the downturn gets worse. as uh, because if they don't lift interest rates up to a minimum 5%, uh, if they lift interest up to, say, for example, 3%, well, in real terms, if inflation, or should I say CPI, it's 8%, that's still a very accommodative interest rate because if you can borrow at 4 or 5%, pretty much inflation is eroding away all that interest and all that debt. And that's what the government wants because the government can't afford to repay the debt. And that's why they want high inflation to erode it away. So let's have a look to see... Um, what the markets are doing now. So stocks bounce and investors try to shake off the Russia-Ukraine, Fed concerns. So yeah, like I said, the markets will try to price these events in like Federal Reserve rate hikes and the conflict with Ukraine. Once in that, But once they price it in, once uh, investment uh, psychology kind of gets over that fear, then that's when you start to see the markets recover. So we're seeing here a bit of a sell, a bit of a sell off, uh, slight sell off, uh, at the open, Dow is now down. Uh, is now only up 39 points. S and P only up 0.28 percent, and Nasdaq only up 0.38 percent. Uh, we'll have another look at bonds. So yields are falling a bit, and uh, yeah, crypto is still up a little bit here as well. So go ahead and uh, have a look at the chat. See what you guys' questions are. Hmm. Yep, what are you guys uh, talking about? Speculation with what's going on uh, with Russia, Ukraine? We'll definitely have to see because there's a lot of propaganda from both sides. So also have another look here, what's going on. So Europe zone, our economy faces inflation surge from the conflict that's going on uh, with Russia. Which is uh, which is quite obvious, um, and this has caused the ECB um, to all of a sudden flip when they were trying to play the um, same card the Federal Reserve was doing by saying it's transitory. Now they're acknowledging no, it's not transitory. Um, and remember, in Europe, they actually have negative interest rates. Their interest rate is negative zero point five percent. So it'll be very interesting to see uh, during the next crash if the Federal Reserve goes negative like what Europe has done uh, during 2020. Um, so let's see here. So the uh, Euro, Euro area economy is reeling from surging inflation and new supply chain disruptions after Russia's invasion of Ukraine boosted energy costs and clouded the outlook for global growth. And I know I normally cover the markets in the US, uh, but Europe contributes uh, a huge amount to global GDP. So if you're an investor in the US, uh, or even Australia, you need to pay attention to what's going on around the world and how it can affect us because the economy and the financial markets are very interconnected right now. <clears throat> All right, let's have a look here. Just take a quick uh, swig, swig of water. And so as we can see here, manufacturing uh, sector is facing an unprecedented rise in costs. And um, something I've, I'll just quickly um, that reminds me of another uh, subject I want to talk about is um, the surging building costs um, 
here in Australia and in the US. Um, I actually just had a friend uh, that um, texted me today and he just um, finished building his house and it cost him 650 you know, house and land total to build. Um, but he just had the bank do a, a, do a uh, valuation and they only valued it at 600,000. So he's now, you know, pretty much underwater 48,000 uh, because of the skyrocketing uh, building costs. And I also uh, saw a lady uh, post uh, in, a, in a group chat um, that she was in a contract with a builder. And then all of a sudden, the builder sent her a letter saying, look, we're going to have to increase your build costs by $47,000. Um, and this lady didn't have that kind of money. And, you know, it's really a bad situation for everyone because the consumer, they can't really afford these higher build costs and they're getting caught out. But also feel for the builders as well because uh, if you buy, for example, something off the plan or if you uh, enter a building contract, sometimes they can fix the price for one year. So if these builders um, went into an agreement with their client for one year at a fixed price and then all of a sudden a year later, commodity prices or materials are up 30%, well, then all of a sudden they're building at a loss. So um, we're seeing the develop, uh, developers have big issues in China, um, and we'll have to see what this does to builders in the US and in Australia. Okay, so let's see what else is going on here. Let's have a look at the chat here. What are you guys chatting about? Um, Lee, how long do you think the petrodollar is really going to last? It's over for us in the US. Well, the World Economic Forum gave us that uh, deadline of 2030 that the US won't be the world superpower. So let's see if that happens. And we'll have to see if this uh, Saudi Arabia and China uh, trading deal of uh, trading oil and yuan actually goes through. There's a lot of talk, but it'll be interesting to see if it actually goes through. Yes, sin saying be prepared for a false flag. Let's see what happens. Gold and silver is spiking. Yep. So we're seeing safe haven assets um, like gold and silver having a decent day today. <laughs> I had a suit on before. It was nearly bedtime. I'm not going to wear a suit right before bedtime. This is actually nearly 1 a.m. here in Australia. Okay, let's get back to some news. So I'm sure you've uh, been seeing this in the news. Nickel. Nickel has been going absolutely crazy. There's, we've been seeing lots of volatility uh, in the nickel market, uh, in commodities market, and specifically with nickel. And it's up another 15% today. So <laughs> let me know, are you, any of you guys speculating on uh, nickel? Well, I'm definitely not, but it's, uh, it's up 53% uh, this month in London. And um, they've had to close nickel trading because of such crazy volatility. And uh, I think I heard somewhere that the nickel in your coins uh, are actually worth more than the face value of those coins. So that's very interesting. And I think that's why they're definitely going to want to go cashless because the money isn't going to be worth you know, the paper or the material they use to create it. So uh, ruling price moves are sparking turmoil across commodities. And that reminds me, I'll go ahead and uh, look to see what commodities uh, are doing today. We'll go ahead and bring up the charts here. Okay. So oil is starting, starting to kind of level out here at $120 um, per barrel. But again, something I've been watching, and I don't know how Europe is really going to um, recover from this, is the surging gas prices in Europe. So it is up 550% this year, and today it is up again as well. TTF gas is up 1.7%, and uh, UK gas is up 4.6%. And this may be because I think Russia just came out uh, saying that if you want to buy their gas, it has to be traded uh, in rubles. Um, so we'll see if that actually becomes a thing. That may be behind the recent surge we're seeing today. And just this week, it is up around 14 and 16%. And we can see all these commodities are absolutely skyrocketing. So there's definitely going to be more inflation coming. But if the Federal Reserve doesn't do anything about it, well, then we may see 
and melt up in the markets like we've been talking about. And this is why I'm trying to protect myself against this kind of scenario by hedging with gold, silver, cryptocurrencies, and uh, a little bit of S&P 500 ETF as well. And of course, you also want to have, you know, emergency fund, extra food, water, uh, in case for emergencies, a bit of cash, etc. But I've already got all that covered. So that's why I've started to dollar cost average back into the markets a bit. Gold price. Okay, let's have a look to see what is happening with gold. Where's my gold here? Okay, so gold is starting to move up now. So it's up nearly a percent now to uh, $1,956. Dead man, 21122. I often see you promote Moomoo at the end of your videos. Is there any way you can do a video? I suggest already made video that compares Moomoo to Robinhood and other investing applications. Yeah, so the reason what's good about Moomoo is they have uh, low fees and also they don't trade, uh, they also don't sell uh, your order flow. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's see what else is uh, going here. So, yep, yields on bonds are going a little down a little bit. So we're seeing it. We're seeing a rotation back and forth from uh, risk on to risk off. Okay. Well, it, this was an interesting article um, I wanted to uh, share with you guys. I'll go ahead and adjust this here. So our favorite uh, investment bank, BlackRock. So Larry Fink says war will speed up shift to green energy and digital currencies. So, um, you know what they say, never let a good crisis uh, go to waste. And just to be clear, I'm all for green energy uh, and renewable energy and uh, trying to find ways to help the environment. But unfortunately, what I think they're doing here is just trying to use this as a way to um, progress their agendas in a way to profit up, profit off the people. Um, if they can do it in a way that doesn't cause gas prices in the US, you know, go over seven dollars uh, a gallon, and you know, over three dollars in Australia, and uh, over like place three dollars like in the UK, I'm all for it. But unfortunately, uh, what this is doing is they're trying to do it too quick. It's not being implemented uh, properly, um, and it is making the cost of living uh, for the poor and the middle class, you know, unbearable. So BlackRock CEO sees potential for global digital payment system, which of course is all going to be coming. Uh, the central bank digital currencies, uh, they've been saying this for years now, it's just a matter of time, especially like I was just talking about with um, nickel prices going up. You know, they're not going to be able to afford to uh, print uh, or create real currency anymore. That's why they're going digital. And then again, maybe these social uh, social credit scores will come along with it. So he says he shares investors' disappointment with firm's stock price. Okay, what else is going on here? Yeah. yeah it's just, just again repeats that. It's talking about energy. On digital currencies, Fink said the war will prompt countries to reconsider their reliance on traditional money and payment systems. Well, that's what we're seeing in Russia and Ukraine right now. A lot of people can't get their money out of the bank um, and they can't get money sent from family. So a lot of them are getting paid in cryptocurrencies. So that is some utility that cryptocurrency does have. Um, when the banking system goes down, you have some digital currency. But you should also have some gold and silver, some real hard assets as well in case you know the internet goes down or the power grid goes down. So global digital payment system thoughtfully designed can enhance the settlement of international transactions while reducing the risk of money laundering and corruption. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's I'm sure there's no money laundering or corruption uh, with the investment banks or the banks, especially not HSBC. <laughs> um, so he's yep, he's just going on this studying stable coins and how they can be used to help clients. So he said, challenging financial markets have taken a toll on BlackRock shares. I guess they're also getting a lot of bad press. Uh, adding a significant uh, owner of BlackRock shares myself, I share your disappointment in our stock performance. BlackRock is down 20% this year compared with a 6.5% decline for the S&P 500. Yeah, so maybe it's because people don't really like BlackRock anymore and 
they're getting some uh, karma for um, bidding up these house prices by 20%. So have to see what's going on in the chat. Um, <laughs> BlackRock will lose trillions. Well, they're pretty much they already are. Mm -mm. Yeah, BlackRock. I think one of their f one of their investment arms does have. Um, does have uh, exposure to Evergreen and developers in China. Not 30% of their total $10 trillion, but one of their investment arms does have exposure to China and Evergreen. So they're wondering if the yield curve between the 2 and 10 year will happen this month. Yes, that would be very interesting to see. Uh, if that happens, I'll go ahead and uh, pull that up to see what that is right now because it is getting closer and closer uh, to inverting. And this is what's normally um, predicted a recession uh, over the past 50 years. So you can see here, um, I'll go ahead and adjust this here. The spread between, the difference of the yield between the 10 and the two year in uh, March 2021 was around 1.6%. And you can see here, it's been rapidly declining down to, now the difference is only 0.19%. Okay. Now, something that also could be another scenario for the markets, because I'm thinking it is very likely for a recession, um, and I think the markets have tried to price this scenario in, is... There's always a possibility the recession could be good for the markets. Now, you may think, what? How could a recession be good for the markets? Well, remember what happened in 2020? Uh, the economy absolutely plummeted in uh, real terms when GDP plummeted. But what did that lead to? It led to more money printing by the Federal Reserve, and it led the Federal Reserve to drop interest rates to zero. So why I still think a recession is possible it could be actually bullish for the markets because then that means the Federal Reserve all of a sudden may flip and they may use uh, the economy going into recession as an excuse not to fight inflation. But who knows, maybe they won't. Maybe they'll say, look, no, we still have to lift interest rates, even if it takes us into recession to bring down inflation. Uh, but they still haven't been quite clear on their stance there. So read your comments here. We'll have another swig of water. My throat's getting a bit dry. Been talking too much. <clears throat> all righty everyone have another look at the markets uh, before we just quickly wrap this live stream up <coughs> yep so markets are uh, pretty flat at the moment we'll have a look at crypto Yeah, so pretty much the same as well. Again, Cadena were up about 13%. And uh, Doggy Coin Doge up about 10%. So everyone, you got any questions? We'll now uh, head over to the Q&A uh, part of the live stream. You lose change, Tom. <laughs> it will be worth more than your cash. That's right. Jordan wants me to change it back to Michael Invest and tries to make money. The thing with that is the name was too long. Um, I tried to tell people my name and they wouldn't be able to remember it. So I just thought, I'll just be simple, nice and short and simple, just to use my own uh, personal name. Philip, why haven't Australia lifted interest rates? Well, that's a question I'm asking. Um, I think the Australian CPI is much more manipulated uh, than the US CPI. The RBA is still trying to say it's only three and a half percent. Sorry, everyone, I'm getting getting dust uh, in my mouth here. 
Yeah, and sorry, I had to uh, adjust my uh, audio volume there when I was coughing. So uh, gas prices over four dollars and twenty cents in Kansas. <coughs> All right, everyone. I think I'll call the stream <coughs> there. Been talking too much, losing my voice here, um, and it's nearly bedtime. So uh, thanks for watching, everyone, and of course, I'll see you all in the next video.